Hi, my name is uh, Yong Chi Fai. I'm a co-founder of uh, DA Automation and Robotics. I'm also a senior lecturer at University of Technology Malaysia. So DA Automation is a company where we design and manufacture automated guided vehicle for industry. AG basically is an indoor mobile robot that can move on its own. So it really be helpful in the manufacturing uh, to help them to actually move part from one point to another point. Uh, so as a lecturer, I work with a lot of students and also do a lot of research. We build robots, we join competition and so on. And throughout the year, we won many, many awards, represent Malaysia to a part of the world. But to be honest, after we joined the competition win the award, when we came back, the student graduate and that's about it. The innovation and invention is stored there. So we were thinking that we should do a little bit further. So back in 2011 and 12, then we start to look into what are the industry really want. So there's one industry came to us and said that, hey, uh, Yong, can you build this robot for, for them? So that's how it all started. So we went into the company, then uh, we built the robot for them, then they start buying, and then we say that hey, actually this can can become a business. So that's why we start making this company. So it's back to my personal story also. I'm a lecturer, so since 1996 until 2010, I like make innovation. I have won more than over 100 award innovation in uh, various countries. <laughs> so I won in British, in Korea, in Japan, even in Malaysia and so on. So when I came back, when I, after I finished my PhD in London, I came back, I think then I said, that, hey, I won all these 100 award, but it didn't really bring any economic value to the country. So I come back to Malaysia, I asked my student to build a startup, to build an entrepreneurship, or try to make a product that can actually sell to the world and things just doesn't work out. Then I try to understand and try to explore why cannot. So if you go to the US and you go to UK or Japan, the startup uh, ecosystem is very strong. And one of the reasons being is we don't have a success story. I mean, in, in the US, we have Facebook, we have Google. In Korea, we have Samsung. In Japan, we have Sony and so on. But in Malaysia, we don't have that. That was 10 years ago. So then I say that, hey, why don't we build one of a technology company that can be proud of? The student or the lecturer can wanted to build a company. So that is really one of my vision to build a technology company back then. So from a business point of view, we were actually surprised actually this big company is an MNC Canadian company in Johor Bahru came to us and said that young we want to buy a robot and this robot is not cheap it's easily more than 10 over thousand ringgit Malaysia then uh, we said why do you just buy from Japan, Germany and also from the US so then the GM is very close then you say that what young you just make one and see how it goes so we make one we sell to them and even when we sell to them we thought that we sell them with a very high price then they told us that hey young you sell very cheap so from one unit they buy four from four unit they buy 10 out of sudden we think that hey, this this is a viable business so we go a bit deeper there only we understand that actually a lot of Malaysian company try to buy this robot they are either not able to buy we actually ask our neighbor from Singapore how much is one robot similar robot they cost us easily 400,000 Singapore dollar that is about 2 million in Malaysia so we did ask one from US that is actually a Kiwa robot that is easily one robot 1.5 million dollar so we are selling a thousand cheaper than all this robot and we didn't know about that so moving forward then we see there's a huge gap from this region to other regions. So that's why we built this business for most of the company around here, around this region. Why do I love my team? It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of like in during as a lecturer, so I teach students. Of course, we I like I mentioned earlier on, I joined a lot of innovation competitions and so on. So it become that that team is quite small, maybe. 10, 20 percent. The objective for the innovation competition is, so is quite straightforward. You just need to win the competition. They give you a set of rules, you follow and you compete with other people. If you become number one, then you win it. But from this business point of view, to be honest, it's, it's very different. There is no rules and you kind of like need to plan yourself. And uh, in order to achieve that, I really need to have a different kind of a set skill. For example, from a business point of view, from a technical point of view and so on. And I really need a big team of the patient team to be involved and everyone contribute to what they should contribute so yeah I, I really like them because my team are mostly my students they are every age of my team right now is about 27 years so we have about 50 staff now and yeah all of them like robotics and they come here not because of money to be honest they can easily go to uh, other company with higher salary but they still want to come here because we all have the same vision we want to build one of the biggest technology company in this region yeah. so in the past, uh, when we have challenges, it's very, very tough for us. Uh, as at that time, we are not ready. So at the early stage, our big challenge is about business. We have, we know nothing about business. We know nothing about finance. So then at that time, me and my team, very short, 
small team at that now only like 10 people so some of us need to go and learn what is finance and so on because from the NJ backup we don't have that when we grow into a 20 30 size we have another issue when we have more more sales so our operation team need to actually cater this kind of a sale so we need to learn about this operation team up to 50 staff now so we have another challenge which is about culture and how to grow to another aspect and so on. along the way now we learn one thing there is no one answer for all these uh, shortcomings so I always tell my team always when you come to the company don't expect everything is perfect try to see what are the shortcomings and try to solve it the faster you possible <laughs> A lecturer, a full-time lecturer doing research and uh, yeah, a full-time lecturer. <laughs> if I'm not an entrepreneurship, I think I'll be like an investor. I invest into business, I invest quite a bit of a property. So I think I'll go into that direction, property investment. Yeah. So good question. Um, as for now, I mean, when I first started, my aim is actually I want to inspire the student and the lecturer that actually a lecturer can do all this stuff with the students. And the way that I say that maybe I need, if this company go to IPO or being acquired, I think this is a sense of uh, accomplishment as well. But during the journey, actually a lot of uh, students and also my peer, they just start being, uh, making business. So that is a great satisfaction for me. So I hope in the near future, we're going to have a lot more of this. Oh, there's a lot but I think the first assignment was when we broke our first million revenue it's like wow impossible so we look at the bank statement 1 million revenue the second assignment the traction will be actually from my staff last year we only have like 20 staff this year we have 50 staff so this is a totally mind-blowing kind of different expectation and it make really make me exciting about this uh. I would say the third assignment that I would like to share is uh, we managed to sell to overseas now so we have customer in Mexico US UK Philippines so I need to send people there so we need to discuss with the international party how to arrange all this this is all a great stuff for us yeah. How do I manage to scale? Uh, never thought of that. <laughs> so I think for, for us is opportunity comes. So and then we just go according to the wave. As the F1 of you from a finance standpoint, we have a very good mentor. We have some angel investor coming in. So they really support us how to grow the business. On the technical side, the team are really passionate about technology. So we always enrich ourselves about the new stuff and so on. So we keep on pushing ourselves to the boundaries. So we are how to answer this? Uh? Sorry, uh, let me think a bit. <laughs> uh, actually, this is the most interesting part. Like I mentioned earlier, we grow from uh, 20 odd person to 50 odd person. And coming up, actually, we are looking into listing our company. So we are on right track as well. But listing is one option. There's a lot of other options also, acquire or JV. So we are looking into all this possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Jagger, time management. Can you share us the time management? <laughs> <laughs> so I think time management, number one is time management because I'm a lecturer, I still teach and even I teach also, I think the student being appreciated because I have an experience in the uh, real world. So when I teach them, they, I put some real world you know, for them, so they, they value that. So I don't really need to spend a lot of time in the university at one point. Second thing is uh, I have do research also. So every one week, I spend like one day for the research for my students. Uh, I have six hour classes per week. Then I have family and every day seven to 11 p.m. is for my kids, weekend for my family. And for DF Automation, I have a general manager working, managing the whole company. So we have a very good structure. So my role is actually right now for the company is to grow, to seek for fun and so on. So I always tell to my team for the DF Automation point of view, as long as you do what you're supposed to do in your role, the company will work very, very well. So that's the whole idea. So one thing that I tell my team is so you, you manage your time very important, but you don't have to do perfect. So ultimately, you just do until certain level, until you're satisfied that you move on because a lot of people when we seek perfection we keep on delaying until it perfect then you only can do so much thing uh, when you can do so much but you can achieve 80 percent of the so-called performance i think that's good enough so they can do a lot more at one time so, lucrative i don't think lucrative is the right word for my so uh, i wouldn't use a lucrative as a word to to have this startup. One of the reasons for me to have this startup is actually to create a platform for a lot of uh, students and youngsters to actually come in to pursue their interest in robotic and technology. And uh, many of them come here just to really want to share out their knowledge and how to build this company to push to another level. Uh, for the investor point of view, I think we do have a lot of investors coming in. And these investors come in, they, sometimes they don't look into the investment return. They're looking into how to help a company to go to another chapter uh, in this region. So I think that is also very, very important. 
So as a robotic company, we specifically sell AGV like automatic guide vehicle. Six years ago when we first started, we are kind of like the first or maybe the only one in Malaysia or maybe in Singapore as well. Philippines, Vietnam as well, they don't use so much on this uh, robotics. Six years far forward and uh, thing changes and uh, the government really pushed a lot of automation robotics. So now we have quite a bit of a player right now. So our biggest uh, competitor is actually from Japan, from Denmark and also from China. So from these two countries, Japan and uh, Japan and uh, Denmark, they are more high premium robot. For China is more for low cost, we are in the middle segment. So it depending on what the customer uh, look for, if they look for medium segment, they will come to us. Uh. And what can we offer? Uh, why are we better than the other two segments? Because we provide the solution like for Chinese company normally they just make AGV they build a lot of mass production they don't go detail so for us we go very in depth and we provide a full solution for our customer okay so so I wouldn't name who our competitor so I can give an example is like I mentioned we our robot is slightly more expensive than some other robot so customer always want to have a cheaper robot because we are dealing with MNC they have their finance uh, control and so on so we have customer that actually bought the, the low cost uh, AGV so after one month or two months they actually cannot continue to use it for a lot of a reason the support is not good the robot is not up to the standard and so on so they come back to us so once they come back to us then only they know that we have certain technology that uh, we can provide uh, one simple example is we actually sell to Mexico in Mexico they can actually buy AGV from US, Mexico itself, or even Japan, but why they buy from us? So if the AG break down in Mexico, actually our guy in Johor Bahru can actually remote all the way to uh, Mexico to program the whole thing without us flying there. And our robot also being designed to be modular so that our support team partner in Mexico can help to support. So that's make our robot more accessible and also easy to support in services. So that is our unique selling point. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we learn along the way. Like, I'm very, very uh, fortunate to be able to attend to a lot of uh, different courses as the literal program and so on. So some of it we like magic. I went to Silicon Valley, I joined uh, Bismarck, I joined Startup Johor event and so on. So you, you made a lot of these uh, serial entrepreneur successful. So they share about all this stuff. So one of the things that I keep on learning is you have to know how to protect your things and you have to be unique uh, from other companies. So along the way, I tell my R&D team as well, try to see differently. But of course, you do it not just for the sake of be different. You do it for the sake of actually really solve the problem. Then they come up with a lot of innovation and we're also very fortunate to have a support from the government that we actually found a lot of a pattern on this, some of the innovation that we have carried out. Just do it, don't plan too long because once you plan, you can take ages. If you say you want to do robotic now, you can just start the company today and tomorrow you buy stuff from somewhere and build a robot. And So just do it as soon as possible. <laughs> Air for Automation Design and Manufacture Automatic Guided Vehicle, AGV. And right now, we actually sold to many, many countries, including in Mexico, US, UK, and many countries. Moving forward, we are looking into designing and managing a lot more robots. And we are looking for you as an investor, as a member to join us. If you are getting excited to build a new technology for the world, you join us. Thank you very much.